OK, in this short video we're going to be taking a look at diagnosing and hopefully correcting a fault we have with this BMW E46, which is that the low coolant level light, which is that one right there, if we can focus, seems to stay on the whole time. Now the first thing of course is to check the coolant level, so let's just shut the engine off. And don't do this when you've just been running the engine, make sure the engine is nice and cool before you do this, but if you just get a good grip on this um, cap here, you can check the coolant level, and you'll see that the coolant level in this car is fine because the float is floating. So the low coolant level light is on in error, it's not due to a low coolant level issue. And I'm very grateful to the presenter the gentleman who presented the uh, video which I'll link below to show that we can remove the actual coolant level sensor without having to drain the cooling system so we'll go ahead and do that now as I'll show you below you will need to remove this lower trim panel which is held on by some small um, some small screws with a 8 millimeter head I think there are two down each side and three at the back so once you've removed those you'll be able to see the lower, the underside of the expansion bottle, and I'll show you where that is right now. And it is this guy right here, which I'm using the flashlight on with the black connector, and the sensor is the white part. So I'm going to remove the connector first of all by pressing that little tab at the back and pulling it off. Like so. You can see I've just set the connector to one side. And interestingly, when I remove that connector, the light remains on. I would have thought it would be um, off, but okay, I'm not understanding that correctly then. So anyway, let's go ahead and remove the sensor itself now. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a hold of that uh, white connect, that white um, level sensor there and rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees, yes, clockwise. It's a bit counterintuitive. You do it clockwise to undo it. Now I'm going to have to put the camera down to do that because I don't have enough hands to film myself doing that. But you can look at that other gentleman's video if you require to see how to do it. And here is the switch itself, the sensor itself. You can see that it contains what looks like a magnetic reed switch. So the contacts of that will either close or open in the presence of a magnetic field. Now I understand from what I've read that these sensors work by, there's a, a magnet inside of the expansion tank which presumably when it's in the vicinity of that reed switch, that little part right there, um, either opens or closes the contacts. Now the fact that the light remains on when the connector is disconnected tells me that when you've got good fluid level there it must close those contacts and maybe closed contacts corresponds to the light being off. But let's um, investigate that theory a little bit further by shorting together the contacts within the connector and see if that puts the light off. So let's just go ahead and try and do that. OK, so I've just put a short piece of wire to connect together the contacts and see what that does with the light, whether the light comes on when the contacts are closed or open. OK, here goes. And that's interesting. The light is now off, so light off corresponds to the contacts being closed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take this um, sensor inside and put a magnet into the vicinity of it and see if the contacts uh, open and close depending on whether the magnet's there or not. If they do, then that means it's not the, the, um, the sensor that's faulty. It could be the, um, the expansion bottle, but I doubt that because I changed that a couple of years ago. Um, so if these contacts remain open the whole time, that means this sensor is our problem. 
Okay, before we proceed, I'm going to just clean up those contacts there, right there, and see if I can get a good electrical connection with the meter. And then I'm going to measure continuity and see if putting a magnet close to that reed switch changes it from open to closed or closed to open. If not, it means we have a bad sensor and we either have to replace the sensor or maybe we can just replace that reed switch and uh, solder a new reed switch in. Um, just need to determine whether it's supposed to be contacts normally closed or normally open. OK, so let me go ahead and do that. Well, we might not need to go any further because it looks like this connector, where it's connected to the airlock, is actually broken. So maybe we can solder it back. If not, we'll have to replace the sensor, but that should be able to be soldered, I think. OK, so I now have the meter on continuity mode, so that if I touch the two probes together, we'll get an audible beep. So now we're going to put the two probes on the opposite sides and I'm going to push this duff connection down and hold this on here. I'm going to have my glamorous assistant just put the magnet in the position near to the magnetic reed switch. And you can see it in a way. And back close again. And away. So we can see that the switch is actually responding to the magnetic field. So I think all we need to do is to resolder that connection on there and refit it to the car and we should be good to go.